Clarity on Fire, a podcast for people who know what they don't want out of their life and career, but aren't sure what they'd rather be doing. In a world where it's easy to exist, but hard to feel alive, we, Kristen and Rachel, two certified life and career coaches, are here to help you cut through the information overload, get unstuck, and focus not just on how you can have a career you're passionate about, but how to create a whole life that feels fulfilling. So join us here, where we serve up inspiration and down-to-earth wisdom in a way that only two best friends can. We want you to experience the relief of knowing that, yes, you're allowed to want more out of your life and career. And no, you don't have to wander through the dark anymore. Our job is to light the fire that shows you the way. Let's go. Well, here we are again. Um, I'm not ready to share, but we are going to be changing some stuff in the next few weeks. That sounds very ominous. No, it's actually more of an addition. Well, no, it's a little bit of a... A little, bit of, take. a little bit of a subtraction <laughs> and addition. Yeah, we'll have more to say about it. But there is going to definitely be some cool new stuff happening on the podcast. Suffice it to say, even and though... And in the Cardio on Fire world in general yeah. within the next couple of weeks. Even though Rachel and I are 80 years old on the inside, I think maybe I'm 70 and you're 80 on the inside. Yeah. Um, we are trying to make changes that are bringing us into the modern era. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Just the teeniest bit. Um, anyway, so that's like so vague, but I just wanted you to know that there will be some changes a coming in the next couple of weeks. So be um, on the lookout for that. You'll know it when you when you hear it. Well, we'll just be very clear. This I is mean, it. Right. <laughs> okay, so what is this? This is a blog from 2017, which when we started the podcast, I was like, that's so recent. I can't bring that back. And now that's, 2017 <laughs> is three years ago. <laughs> makes me sad. So... I'm bringing this one back. It's about, are you blocking yourself from joy and how vulnerable joy Mm. is? Yeah, people tend to think that happiness is easy and that joy is something they should just be able to feel. And a lot of people actually have real hangups around being able to experience like deep satisfaction and joy and happiness and fulfillment. Yep. And they have like an upper limit around it because it's so scary. You know, it's like, feel like you can lose something if you get that happy. It's almost like you've read this before. That's exactly where it's going. Or read the book that you based it on or something. I don't know. Uh, Okay, cool. Well, we'll hear that. And then we'll be back at the end with something else for them to check out. Yep. Okay. Are you blocking yourself from joy? I think I'm bad at joy, said my client, Laura, at the start of our last coaching call. She went on to tell me about a mini road trip she and her boyfriend took over the weekend. There was a moment in the car when everything felt right in the world. The sun was shining, the windows were down, her favorite music was blasting, and her boyfriend smiled over at her and put his arm around the back of her seat. I literally thought my heart was going to burst. I was so blissed out in that moment, she said. But it didn't last long. Almost immediately, Laura's mind started to freak out. I really shouldn't have taken this trip. My boss is already annoyed that I took a whole week off earlier this month, and now I'm taking another long weekend. Ugh, going back to work on Tuesday is going to be fun. And I probably should have put the money I spent on this trip toward my student loans. I'm going to be paying those off forever. Maybe I should get a second job or a higher paying job. But what kind of job? Do I need a second degree to get a better paying job? But that would mean more student loans. And what if I don't even like that job? Ugh, I'm never going to figure this out. Within 30 seconds... Laura's joy had evaporated. She asked me, what happened? I was so happy. And then I just wasn't. It was like all these crazy anxious thoughts took over my brain. What is wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with Laura. She just has the same impulse that most people I know have. To rein in her joy. Your impulse will be to restrain your joy. As much as we're all seeking happiness... We can get freaked out once we actually feel it. Why? Well, because too much joy feels either inappropriate, it's awkward to be the one laughing until you cry at a work party, or dangerous, watch out, all this happiness could come crashing down at any moment, or naive, how can you be happy when there's so much negativity in the world, or unproductive, no time to celebrate, on to the next milestone. 
So you'll be tempted to restrain your joy. You'll allow yourself to experience only so much of it and only in fleeting moments before you'll talk yourself out of it. Do you have an upper limit problem? The truth is, joy is vulnerable. The happier you feel, the more you've got to lose. And that is freaking scary. Gay Hendricks calls this an upper limit problem in his book, The Big Leap. Your upper limit is the amount of happiness you're comfortable with. And anything beyond that limit is going to send you into full-on freakout mode. For example, many new parents I know tell me that watching their newborn baby sleep is one of the most equally joyful and terrifying experience they've ever had. They've never experienced such an extreme level of pure love and joy before, which means they've never had more to lose. It can send them into a terrifying what-if thought spiral where their brain plays out all of the worst-case scenarios. When you hit your threshold for happiness, your instinct will be to rein in your joy or to self-sabotage to bring you back into your happiness comfort zone. The point is to protect you from massive disappointment. Because if you weren't really that happy to begin with, you can't be but so disappointed if it were to all come crashing down around you, right? Wrong. Watering down your joy doesn't lessen life's disappointments. We have this mistaken subconscious belief that if we tamp down our joy now, then if we wind up disappointed later on, it won't hurt as badly. But if you ask anyone who's been through a tragedy or massive disappointment, they'll be the first to tell you that nothing could have prepared them for the heartbreak. I've known and coached people who have been through divorce, loss of a loved one, a miscarriage, losing their home, frightening health challenges. Not a single one would tell you, I'm so glad I didn't let myself be too happy before this happened because it made going through this experience way less painful. Nope, it doesn't work like that. In fact, they'll tell you the exact opposite. They'll say that they regret not fully enjoying every single moment they had with the person who's no longer in their life, or while they were fully healthy, or generally when life was easier and happier than before the tragedy. The strategy of watering down your joy to make future disappointments easier to bear doesn't work. It's a fallacy. If anything, it increases your future pain because it ensures you'll have lots of missed opportunities to regret. Make your new impulse to feel your joy more intensely right now. Instead, I want you to deny the impulse to rein in your joy and do exactly the opposite. Lean into it. Let the belly laugh spill out of you unfiltered. Feel the depth of your love for your favorite people in the world without worrying how long there will be a part of your life. Bask in the small joys in your day-to-day life. Milk those moments of joy in your life for all they are worth. Here are a few simple ways to feel more joy today. Really enjoy your next meal. Instead of taking a working lunch at your desk or eating a sandwich in your car or scarfing down dinner while numbing out to mindless TV, focus on fully enjoying your food. Eat slowly. Really taste all of the flavors and feel it nourishing your body. Eating can be one of the simplest and greatest joys, so don't numb out while you're eating. Play your favorite song of the moment and just listen. For those three to five minutes while it's playing, you're not allowed to wash dishes or respond to emails or scroll through Instagram. You are, however, allowed to sing, dance, cry, lip sync, or play air drums. Just be with the music and feel it move through you. Hold a hug with someone you love for a split second longer. The next hug you give to your spouse, friend, kid, mom, dog, make it slightly longer than you would normally be comfortable with. It'll spike your feel-good hormones and make you feel especially connected and loved. Find something, anything, to be grateful for right now. Even if it feels like your life is not going the way you want, ask yourself, what am I going to miss about this moment or this phase of my life when it's over? Even at the worst of times, there's always something to feel grateful for. Once you pick something, don't just think about it. Really feel the gratitude wash over you. As I said, those are just a few small things you can do immediately 
to increase your joy threshold. I could go on and on with this list, but I think you're probably seeing a pattern. What all of these things have in common is they force you to be fully present in the moment. You can't experience joy if your mind is replaying moments from your past or worrying about the future. True happiness happens in the present moment. So do whatever it takes to bring yourself into it right now and look for the joy, appreciation, and fun. Where in your life are you limiting yourself from feeling joy? What other suggestions do you have for feeling even slightly more joy right now? As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and personal stories in the comments. We haven't talked about this in a long time. So I wanted to push, plug, promote. I hate all of those words. Share? Mention? Yeah. (laughs) Um, Our free ebook collection, which is actually just a couple years ago. I think it was like two, three years ago two or three years ago, we took some of our most popular blogs at that time and took like seven-ish of them at a time and put them into four different collections. And so one that's very relevant to this blog, this blog might be in that collection. I'm not sure. I I think it maybe came later, but I'm not sure. Well, it says our happy, well, the, the title is our happy people for real, what it takes to live a happy, contented life in a world where that sometimes feels impossible. There's a link in the show notes. There's also four other ones. We have one about like finding your passion and what to do when you're going through an existential crisis. So check all of them out. Yeah, I'll make sure that there's a link to the page where we have all of the eBooks. But if you liked this episode, you're really going to like that one about happiness because we've talked about this in a lot of ways and we just compiled it all for you in one easy place. Well, we talked about it in a lot of ways three years ago. We've talked about it more since then. We have. But a lot of you haven't dove that deep into our archives. So this is like some spelunking for you. <laughs> we'll, we'll, help, we'll give you the gear. <laughs> I I um, aspire never to spelunk in my life. Oh, no. I just... That sounds terrifying. Scary. No. I'm just... I'm, ra- not a, I'm not an adrenaline junkie. No. I'd rather like sit on the edge and be like, hello down there. <laughs> And then that would be fine with me. (laughs) That's enough. Okay, we will see you on Friday, Valentine's Day, for a new episode with a normal person. This one is going to be very good because I did it and I know it's good. (laughs) Um, But it's with my former client, Amanda, who is, I believe, probably the most forthright person I've ever had on. Like, as in, she had no holds barred. She was willing to share every single thing about her life with no editing. I love that. And I'm not saying that everyone should do that when they come on the podcast. That's fine if they don't. But it's nice to hear that real take on real life. I mean, she just shared stuff other people would not have been willing to share. And that's fine that they wouldn't have, but she was. And I find that really, really helpful for people who are maybe harboring shame that no one has ever said out loud in front of, like, I feel that way too, or I did that too. And so it's about forgiving yourself for the mistakes you've made. And in order to do that, we have to talk about the mistakes she made. So, well, I'm excited to listen yeah, to it. Yeah, it was really good. So, we will see you back on Valentine's Day for that. Bye. <laughs>